Um, I thought, what a great time to have Troy on because, you know, I battle with a lot of demonic activity because uh, I'm always going after deliverance and healing on people. And during the month of October, it's particularly dense and hectic because the, the witches, the warlocks, sorcerers, these uh, people and these spirits, they pull a lot of their power from like the moon. They set up altars of worship to constellations, to the moon, even to the sun. And I know that if we don't understand these things, we can actually be under a extreme oppression and not know how to break through against it. Yeah, you know, this is a day of next level witchcraft. And I mean, it's actually in broad daylight now, whereas it used to be in hiding, uh, now it's in mainstream media. You know, we we deal with witchcraft now like we've never before with all the cartels we have to mess with and, our, and, the, and the work that we do throughout the world. We have witches follow us home. I mean, they show up in people's houses, have mm. all kinds of craziness. And this is no joke. The body of Jesus has got to be aware of what's happening and how do we cooperate with the Holy Spirit to fight against it? We have to. Yeah, guys, we don't understand that they're building altars and they're putting sacrifices on their altars so that they can gain power. And they also build altars to tap into the power of the constellations and the sun and the moon and the stars. But the sun and the moon and the stars, according to Deuteronomy 419, let's put that graphic up really quick, guys. It, it, it's, it says that, Take heed, this is the Lord speaking, lift your eyes that you, least you lift your eyes to heaven. And when you see the sun, the moon, the stars, and the hosts of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve them. That's what these witches are doing, which the Lord your God has given to all the people under the whole heaven as a heritage. So there, the enemy is using the power of the celestial bodies, but they're actually our heritage, Troy. Isn't that true? It's absolutely true. It's, it's. You know, it's a it's it's a shame that so many people in the body of Jesus are ignorant of how the heavens declare the glory of God and how many people in satanic realms are trying to steal the glory that's supposed to glorify the Lord in it. And it's about being unified at a certain time on a, at, at a precise moment. And that kind of a unification causes portals to be opened. Wow. And what's real is we don't give any kind of worship to the sun or to the moon or to the stars, but we we're supposed to see them as prophetic markers or moedims for prophetic appointments that God wants to speak something. And there is always something that is counter that. And sadly, the people that don't love God are much more intuitive, to, uh, intuitive towards this thing. And we have to change that because this belongs to us. Okay, that is so, listen, this is why we're having the show, guys. So you can get an understanding as Troy, I'm going to like loose him to preach this message because as we start to have an understanding that the sun and the moon, the stars, the constellations, they're our heritage, ours. They belong to us, not the enemy to use right. against us. And when we become unified in that understanding, it will actually cause portals of power to open up for us. Let's dive into this, Troy. Okay, so how it all works is the 14th verse of the Bible is Genesis 1-4. Whenever God created the material universe, the Bible says, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, seasons, days, mm. and years. Mm. So he didn't just create them to be light. He already had light on the first, second, third day. But he created the sun and the moon and the stars to be for signs, seasons, mm. days, and for years. So the first reason he created them was for signs. They're actually for prophetic signs, or they're supposed to be used as prophetic markers so that we know how to come before the Lord and say, yes, Lord. And then he wants to visit a new layer of the same narrative that he's always spoke to us at certain times in certain seasons. So when the word there for seasons is actually the word Moedim, and it means prophetic assignment, or it means prophetic appointment, you can see it here where it says uh, signs and seasons. That's really a weak translation uh, that we translate into English because it's the Hebrew word moadim. And it means, it means a prophetic appointment for a prophetic posture. Now, wow. the Lord gave us the Lord gave us these things for us to get in alignment with King Jesus as our king. And sadly, uh, the the other side uses this to blaspheme the Lord. Yeah, I mean, the other side is using it against us. I mean, honestly, guys, it, I've seen so much activity with these witchcraft assignments that people are getting physically sick. I mean, if you look at the Bible, what did 
Sarah and Abraham worshiped the moon goddess. Okay, now what did it get them? They were barren and impotent. That's what Romans 4 said. Okay, and in Acts 16, in the city of Lystra, they worshiped uh, Zeus and Jupiter and all this, and this man was there born crippled from the womb. Okay, and Paul saw he had faith to get healed. He told him to rise up. He was told to heal. And they started calling Paul and Barnabas by the name of God, star gods, gods that represent the planets. Okay, so this is why that guy was, this is why that guy was crippled from the womb. It's because right. these star gods are, are, are the enemy taking traitors' yep. possession of the constellations and the stars and the planets and using them yes. for their benefit. And, and people worship them as idols. And the Bible says idols are actually deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. So those spirits That's are right. causing deafness, dumbness, crippling of the body. That's why that man was born crippled from the womb. Because uh, man, they, were, nailed it. they were star god worshipers. So talk into that it. because people don't understand this at all. Okay, so, so here's what the stars are supposed to do. They're supposed to glorify God. So the Bible says in Psalms 19, 1 through 4, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. And then it says, day unto day it utters speech and night unto night shows knowledge. And then it says, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. Mm. Okay. Katie, what this is saying is this. This is for God's glory. And actually what it tells us is how awesome Jesus is. Every Listen, the hero of the heavens is Jesus. And that's why these traitorous, blaspheming devils want to steal these pictures and have human beings be enslaved by worshiping them. Wow. That way they can say that we are their <laughs> creation, right? Well, we're not their creation and we will never glorify them. We'll mm. never line up with them. And, you know, you actually mentioned, you actually mentioned at the beginning of this, you know, we're talking about Halloween and this whole thing. Well, this is why we don't need to line up with these demonic seasons. We're supposed to live according to the seasons of the Lord. Come on. And those seasons are actually you know, the, the Jewish holidays and feasts and those kinds of things. And for us to line up with Luciferian seasons literally is asking them to hold us captive. Wow. And we cannot do that. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to celebrate Halloween. I understand that there's a big cultural thing to it. We always do a big harvest celebration here. And we're, we come from a rural Johnson County, and that's a real deal for us. But I just don't want anything to do with Halloween. I, 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 again, I'm all about loving on kids and having fun with kids and things like that. But I know what Halloween is, and I know what happens on Halloween. We have literally rescued kids from the ritualistic, terrible, hor horrible things that happen on Halloween because they believe, the demons believe, and demoniac people believe that portals are opened at this time. Wow. And I want to tell you, I want to see an open window of heaven. I don't want to see an open window to hell. You know, I don't know if we have that picture, guys, of Martha, but uh, Troy has spent 28 years rescuing children from trafficking. Now, I want you to tie this in with the story of Martha with what you're saying right now about Halloween and these portals that are open if we decide to partake of this this pagan holiday. Yeah, so this is one of more than 10,000 kids that we've actually rescued out of sexual slavery. And this little girl, that's a 12-year-old child. And that little girl was a part of a ritualistic satanic worship on the Tex-Mex border. And they literally line up these children and they molest these children specifically at Halloween. And they enslave them so that they, so that for the rest of their life, they belong to the devil and they belong to what? whatever their oh annex gosh. are for whatever it is that they want to do. But they also believe that they are empowered, and indeed they are, through these ritualistic acts, and they become something else through this. And so, you know, the Bible talks about Nimrod became a mighty man, and the whole Nephilim thing, and as it was in the days of Noah, people partnering with demonic spirits in actually sexually, it, actually sexually, sexually engaging in demonic activity. That was what was going on in the days of Noah, and Jesus Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the return of the Son of Man. Mm. We're living in that day today. Oh, oh, yeah, we are. And the book of Enoch, look, I don't have time to expound on the validity of talking about the book of Enoch, though the ancients yep. all use the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch is quoted in the Bible. That's, you know, I'll just kind of leave it there for now. Do your homework. Uh, but, you know, it talks about how these fallen watcher angels taught men 
how to worship the stars, how to the stars. to look at That's the stars. Right. But as you said, it's for us. Well, so so this thing belongs to the Lord, and these demons, these little G gods, you know, you know, these sons of God, which you and I are absolutely replacing, you and I are, because as many as are led by the Spirit, these he gives us power to become the sons of God. Amen. And so they hate our guts, and what they want to do is they want to take the stories of the heaven, and they want to take the way that things line up, and they want to accuse God of being blind, mechanical fate, and then they want to say, we are actually gods, and they know that we we are vulnerable to such things when actually all the story in the heavens of all 88 constellations that are within the heavens, there's 88 of them that have been placed in our firmament or our field of vision. They glorify the Lord and they tell the story of King Jesus. Every single one of them mm. do. And beginning at Virgo the Virgin, it's the promise of a Messiah that, uh, uh, that, that a child will be born through a virgin. And after that, it is the scales. He's going to be a redeemer. And then after that, it's Scorpio. He's going to take on death. And then after that it's Sagittarius. I'm sorry. It's uh, after yeah. It's Sagittarius, and he will rise up from the dead, and he will conquer death. And then after that is Capricorn, and out of his body shall come a whole new living people. Out of his, out of him laying down his body, a whole new body will be made. And after that is Aquarius, and what is that? It's the power of the Holy Spirit being poured out upon his church. And then after that, I want to show you this next one. Let me see if we got the graphic here. Do we have the next one? We do. Okay. After that is we're going to learn the Word of God, and we're going to learn the one new man. And it's two fish in Old Old Testament and New Testament, and a bond of covenant between the two of them. After that is. Uh, I believe it's Aries. Yep. Aries is after that. And what is that? His kingdom come, his will be done. After that is Taurus the bull. Here comes Taurus the bull. The unstoppable momentum of Jesus returning back and the brightest star is Aldebaran. And it means that it means every eye shall see him. After that is the Gemini twins. Oh, stop and right what is there. That? Did you say that inside that constellation, go back to Taurus, there's a star inside that constellation's formation that actually means what? It means every eye shall see him. <laughs> see, Katie, the stars of all these. Listen, the pictures tell a story, but the names of the stars also tell a story. Wow. And you can look them up, and they're all in ancient Hebrew and Arabic and Greek to this day. Well, it's what the and Bible you can look calls those things up. It's what the Bible calls the Maseroth, right? That's right. It's the Maseroth. So the Greeks call that the Zodiac. And, you know, immediately our cringe meters peg when we start talking about the Zodiac. But the Bible refers to it three different times as the Maseroth. And it's the great story of redemption. Mm. It glorifies Jesus. Jesus is the hero of the heavens. So if Jesus is your king, you're going to look at this and say, before this was written in the Bible, it was written in the heavens because the author is the same. Okay, look, remember what Troy said, that the stars are for signs, seasons, days, years, and they, it's, it's Moadim. It causes us to have a prophetic appointment for a prophetic stance. We have to know these things in this hour because prophecy, the stars are speaking. The Bible talks about it. I think it's Psalm 19, correct me if I'm wrong, Troy, but the stars are speaking the glory of God. They're speaking the prophetic word. They're speaking signs and seasons. And if we don't know how to align ourselves, we won't be able to take the Moedim, the prophetic stance against the evil of this world, and against the things that are happening to us. We're being told what to do, but we have to understand what we're hearing. Yeah, we have to be willing to look into this thing. And again, I know, just like you know, that uh, evil people have done evil things with this. And so because we have lazy faith and because we're not zealous for the Lord, we have just said, okay, well, I don't want nothing to do about that because somebody bad has done something with that. Well, those same people don't say that about sex. Those same people don't say that about money. Mm. And these things glorify the Lord. Mm. These things, listen, Jesus owns these things and they are part of our godly heritage. So no, I want to know these things and I want to know how to line up, glorify King Jesus and actually be a bigger part of his kingdom through this. Okay, now find the picture of Martha before again and then after. Now you see, you, you see that she's wearing black. She's got black lipstick. The, it, it's not goth. According to Troy, it's not goth, correct? That's right, it's not goth. It's, it's not, uh, worship no. of the, explain that part. 
It's called it's called Santo Muerto, and it's literally the worst. It's called holy death. In other words, we believe that death is holy, or our God is the death God. And that's huge in Mexico. It's monstrous. All the cartels worship it. And they, they sacrifice people and, and children on certain dates to get power for their cartels. Mm. She was actually a part of that, and we rescued her. Now, look at the after picture, guys. Let's look at her after. Look, it's a beautiful beautiful yeah. little girl now honestly i have been doing deliverance for a long time troy and i feel like the reason one of the parts one of the mantles you carry you not only carry the mantle of a papa because i've seen videos of these girls that you rescue running to you running to you they and and even girls that were mute so traumatized by their their trafficking that they became mute speaking for the first time because you, uh, you, because of the love and the mantle that you have on you, it breaks that spirit of you know stealing their voice right off of them, and they begin to speak. But I also believe that one of the mantles that's on you is to deliver these girls of these demonic star god spirits that are on yes. them that have been implanted in them through these horrible ceremonies that happen yes. like during these high unholy times like Halloween. Is that correct? Do you feel that? Absolutely, I do. And it's and it's not really anything I do so much. It's just the way I carry the presence of the Lord. And I I want to tell you this. I don't I don't do a lot of things, right? I mean, I'm liable to you know I, I'm I'm just like any normal human being. But I can tell you one thing. I am loyal to King Jesus, and mm. I am a kingdom man. And if we would just declare our loyalty and our awe for the Lord, which is which the word for that is called the fear of the Lord. There's no way that you can worship the stars or worship the demons that represent themselves as the hosts of heaven, uh, there's no way that you could be lined up with that if you fear the Lord. If you say, yes. I am a straight up Jesus guy, and our loyalty is needed in such a great way in the kingdom mm. today, and with that comes a mantle that uh, the anointing breaks the yoke, and it breaks oppression off of people in certain kinds of ways. It's true. Yeah, so just to say something, guys, that, you know, you might think, well, I'm not worshiping, you know, any demons associated with the planets that are named after Roman and Greek gods and goddesses. I'm not doing that. But you don't know what's happened in your bloodline. You don't know what's happened in the past. A lot of times I pray for people and they'll say stuff like, wow, I just saw like an alien spaceship leave me. That's a prophetic sign that they're getting delivered of the spirits like that were on that man in Lystra that made him crippled from the womb. And people start getting healing and breakthrough. This is not just like this woo, -woo you know, the twilight zone type topic. This topic is very applicable. Look, because Troy knows what he knows, and because he loves the Lord all the way, he's able to deliver that little girl of the implantation she's had. I'm able to deliver people of crippling spirits that are connected to the star gods and all this other stuff. This stuff is real, Troy. This, this stuff is real, and it's a big part of the plan that God actually has coming all the way up to the return of King Jesus. So can we unpack that just a little yes, bit? Yes, okay? please. Okay, well, let me, for, for all of my Bible thumping friends out there, let me just show you some things. First of all, Daniel, the Bible says that he was, that he was somebody who was put in charge of all the wise men, and he stepped into a demonic society, a demonic culture, yes. and he taught those guys how to see the Messiah in the heavens. Mm -hmm. And then 400 years after him, the wise men from, from the east, which is Babylon, they came and they said, where is this Messiah that we may worship him? So Daniel also had a revelation that said, not only is Jesus going to come back and save Israel, he's actually going to offer salvation to the whole world. And I want this demonic bunch to be the first people to bow their knees. And they went there and they wow. bowed their knee and they declared their loyalty to King Jesus, taught by Daniel himself to look for Jesus in the heavens. Sure. Now, whenever, whenever the angels showed up in the fields and they showed the shepherds, the Bible says that they showed up as the hosts of heaven. They looked like constellations and they understood the plan of redemption and that Jesus would be born because they saw and heard the hosts of heavens, right? Wow. All right, now go 
going off into the future from that, and by the way, they followed a the star to get there. Yeah, they did. Um, mm-hmm. And that is New Testament. Yeah. So then going and then going into the future, Jesus himself says in Luke chapter 21, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And mm. he said that in present future tense to speak into all the critics of our day. He said, no, there will be signs Mm. in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And when you see these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads because your redemption draws near. It tells us the timing of Jesus. It's all about the story of Jesus. So when, so Jesus wasn't just saying something flowery. He was actually declaring the word. Now, all the way through the century and all the way through the Bible, when God when when God gives a prophetic sign through the sun or through the moon or to the stars, it's a lot like the difference between Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. It's it's three different groups of people. So when God declares a word through the sun, it's always masculine. It's always a, it's always a masculine word, and it's always a word to the nations. Okay, to the yep. nations, Katie. Okay. And then and then when God declares a word through the moon, it's always feminine. The moon has a 28 day cycle and 28 is a number that means times and seasons. That's why there's 28. There's why there is uh, 28 of those times and seasons in Ecclesiastes chapter three. But with that said, there's 28 day cycle. A woman has a 28 day cycle. So the moon is always seen as feminine. And when there is a sign in the moon, it's to God's covenant people. So it's either to the people of Israel or it is to his bride, the Christ. Well, I'm sorry, the bride of Christ. Okay. Then whenever God speaks to the stars, it is always his children of inheritance. That's why God took Abraham out and said, okay, I got to get the ceiling off of you, pal. Mm. And in order for me to show you this plan, we're going to have to look at the stars and yeah. I'm going to have to reveal something to you. Mm. Okay. So he did that. So, so if there are signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars, it's like God, it's, it's like God broadcasting across all platforms. Wow. And that's where we're at today. And this is actually happening. 